everyone, welcome back to Ground to Ground. We're here in Fairford, see Fairford Town, and we've started the day by going into Spike's Diner, which is attached to the stadium. It's a really cool place, I'll show you a pan of it, but it's like an, an American American style diner, can't wait to eat, but not anything like this at a football club. But we spoke to some people from it, and they said what to check out, and they said check out Spike's Diner. So, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's just, you know, standard burger and chips. It seems like they've got something really stylish and unique here. So we'll get some food shortly and let you know what I think. Got my standard club badge. I like this one. Looks like a seahorse fighting a lion. That's very cool. Here we are, mac and cheese bites and a giant veggie burger. Can't wait. That's huge. Mmm. This is a tasty burger. <laughs> uh, mac and cheese bites. Mmm, very good. We're going from AFC thinners to mukbang thingers at this rate. <laughs> Costs about a tenner for a drink, burger and a side, so that's not too bad. But yeah, really like it, Spike Steiner. You've, you've impressed. So Maldo's just finished his meal. He got, um, was it, giant burger and mac and, mac and fruit. So the killing animal version of what I got. <laughs> what do you think? It's good, isn't it? Exceptional. Exceptional. That's probably by far the best food we've had on Grand Square so far, I think. Mm, definitely. Yeah. After that stone cold Steve Austin Portsmouth. Oh, <laughs> but Tom said he's giving food a 9.5 out of 10. That's miles ahead of any others. But Just when I thought it couldn't get any better, I got a picture of the singer Ian Brown of the Stone Roses. I love this place. Well, thank you, Spike Steiner. I had to finish it off. Tom had a butterscotch milkshake. I couldn't, I couldn't resist, I had to get one for myself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna quote Pulp Fiction again, it's a pretty good fucking shake, I think that's the line. Yeah, Spike Steiner, I'll pop a link to them in the description because they do delivery. And if you're based around the Cotswolds, make sure you do support a local business that does great food. Tom just went up to them and said it's the best ever food he's had at a football stadium. Bear in mind we've been to Old Trafford and Wembley together, that's a big statement. On to the football. Fairford Town were founded in 1891 and played in the Sirencester and District League until the Second World War, after which they joined the Swindon and District League. In the 1960s, they won the double of the Premier Division and Advertiser Cup twice, in 1965 and 1969. They then went on to win the Hellenic First Division and Division One Challenge Shield in 1972. Success followed throughout the 70s and 80s, as they added two Gloucestershire Challenge trophies to their cabinet. After a lengthy spell in Hellenic Premier Division, they were relegated to Hellenic Division 1 West, but achieved promotion back to the Premier Division in 2017. They remained in the Hellenic Premier Division, where they finished 11th the previous campaign. Overall, they have won one Hellenic Premier League Division 1, two Swindon and District League Premier Divisions, one Hellenic Premier Division Cup, and two Gloucestershire Challenge Trophies. And a bit of trivia, the club has hosted a number of sporting evenings with high-profile guest speakers such as Nigel Owens, Jan Molby, and Ray Parler. So those are our hosts, Fairford Town. Let's have a look inside their home, Cinder Lane. Another thing I've never seen before, sofas. You can watch a football match in the ground on a sofa. This I like. And a little bit of uh, fact files about the club on the board here. I love it here, this is great. Anything of the FA Cup has my approval. I don't know why, but I absolutely love this little pitch that's next to the main ground. I suppose it's quite smart because if they get, say, a big FA Cup tie against a football league team, they could just put loads of bleachers in this space to allow them to have a bigger capacity. We're in the club bar, watching the squash as you do. My can of Coke. Very interesting shirt selection. There's a Gunners one over there in the corner. Watford, Coventry, Southampton, who's that? Swindon. And Chelsea signed shirts. And a gorgeous shot of the FA Cup there. Well, we're, um, yeah, ambitious Hellenic League football club in the heart of the Cotswolds. Trying to uh, do things as best as we can um, for the level. Got a young, hungry squad, hopefully, ready to take on the challenge of this season. I said, I've been at the club now. This is my, my sixth season. First, first one now in this role of director of football. And um, 
yeah, we're keen to keep building on the progress we've made over the last five years. My job now is to really focus on making sure that the, the club keeps building on the football side of things. Five years ago, we literally had one team, one adult team. We were struggling to you know, get 11 out on the pitch some weeks. Um, fast forward now to this season, um, we've got a you know, good first team squad, reserve team squad, um, academy now, for teams under 12s up to under 16s um, and we want to just keep on flourishing and getting that link with you know, and ultimately look to be start producing our own players. Spike's Diner is the thing that I think that sets us apart from most clubs I mean you, you won't get a better burger in non-league football I say it's fantastic to have it's a fantastic asset um, for us I mean I think you get a friendly welcome I said the sun's, the sun's out it's a nice little ground you know it's a lovely little picturesque kind of place to play your football. Only about five minutes in, Furfa take the lead. The ball's been played across the box. Easy goal to tap in. They take the lead. Very happy for them. 1-0. And right away, only about a minute, just over a minute later, Worcester Raiders equalised. The throw came in, the keeper missed it, and the player has thumped it into the net 100 miles an hour. One goal apiece. I feel like we'll be seeing a lot of goals this evening. Goodness me, we're only 10 minutes in and Worcester Raiders have turned it around. One of their forwards beat the offside trap and he's lobbed it over the Fairford keeper into the net. 2-1, 10 minutes in, we've seen three goals. Half an hour in and Raiders make it 3-1. It's controversial because only a few minutes ago, um, Fairford attacker was tripped when pretty much strong goal. Referee didn't give it. And now Raiders have come at the other end and players blast it in when Guy crossed it in was probably offside, but the linesman didn't give it. 3-1 to the Raiders. Cheers, mate. 4-1. It's a scramble in the box and the Raiders have hit in. You never would have guessed Fairford were in front. It's 4-1. Five goals, the record... Is eight, which happened at Bishop's Cleveland Tuffley. That could well be equalled or broken, but it's not the way I was hoping the game would go. Well, some half of football there, four one at half time. Fairford just overwhelmed by that onslaught of goals, and their heads are just dropped. Hopefully, this sort of gives slows down the momentum, gives them a chance to recuperate. Tom was saying they sort of needed to do damage limitation for half time. They've managed to just about do that since the fourth goal. They're not out of this. It's really weird. Like they are four one down, mm. but like it, Worcester aren't dominating the game. It's just yeah. they're more clinical. Yeah, exactly. I would like. I would, it's not like they've had shot after shot. They they just they just have taken their chances. Yeah, but exactly. it's not it's not been an onslaught. But I, I think I, I reckon if it was like if there was position stats, I'd say it'd be fairly even. Yeah. I agree. Well, it's like basically Worcester. Uh, sorry, Fairford scored early on in the first half. If they score early on the second half, it could well be a comeback. But I guess we'll have to see. Cause yeah, if, when we say that, then yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's it's either going to finish like five four or it's just going to stay four one. I guess we'll have to see. But it's a good way to start the season four one half time. About well, midway through a second half, it's, they seem to have used up all their goal allowance because it's been fairly quiet this half. It seems like Fairford have, have been able to do the damage limitation we mentioned, but I feel like it could be proven wrong, but I feel like it's going to stay this way now. It's been quite dull second half, but we'll see. Still for one. In the dying minutes, Worcester Raiders have put the cherry on top, cross swung in and a looping header has gone into the net, 5-1.
not long to go, but at least we have seen a goal in the second half. Soon after it's finished 5 1 to us, the Raiders. Shame for Fairford, it all started so well, but they're a young team. Hopefully, they can turn it around. And good luck to them for the rest of their campaign. 5 1 full time. So that was Cinder Lane, home of Fairford Town. So, yeah, disappointing result. Fair play to us, the Raiders, for the win, but it doesn't take away what a great ground this has been to come to, like the welcome, the food. It's been an absolutely lovely place to visit. It's just a shame they couldn't get the results to top it off. But yeah, like I said, it doesn't take anything away. Thank you to everyone at Fairfood, including Jody, who's been so welcoming. And I think in terms of all the sort of semi-professional non-league rounds I've been to, this definitely trumps them all, I would say. I thoroughly recommend it to any ground toppers. They really go the extra mile to make sure it's a unique experience. Like they've really put a lot of effort into not just the food, but like the bar, the way they've done it up, renovated it. And they've made sure it's been very welcoming by showing facts about the club and having a sign saying welcome ground hoppers and i really appreciate that because like a lot of clubs might be a bit frugal and not go that extra mile but fairford have really done that and hopefully by doing that my recommendation will lead to me coming back and generating them more money and if there's any ground hoppers watching this video they might think oh sweet i will go to fairford so yeah, thank you Fairford, I'd definitely like to come back at some point, thank you all for how welcoming you've been and let's hope you can turn things around and have a good season. So that was Cinder Lane, home of Fairford Town, thank you all for watching and stick with us as we go round to round, AFC Fitness Alex.